This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, buddy! Alright, happy Halloween, everybody. I know if you're watching this on YouTube, it's going to be long after Halloween, but as the time of streaming this final part of Higarashi When They Cry, I am playing this on Halloween night. Not a full moon, but it is pitch black and every single light in my house is turned off, so we're preparing for big spooks, and last time... We finally started getting into the horror aspects of this game, so... Rena is kind of going crazy a little bit. She definitely started making some creepy facial expressions. She snuck into our house and eavesdropped on our conversation. And I feel like before I start, I kind of need to recap some stuff, because I've been thinking about what the heck is going on. So, based on what we know, over the last few years, every year on the Watanagashi Festival, somebody dies, somebody disappears. So the first year, it was like the foreman of the dam construction site died, and one of the, it was by a bunch of people, and one of the people who killed him disappeared. The next year, there was the husband and wife. Husband died, wife disappeared. The year after that, it was Rika's parents. Uh, her dad died, and her mom disappeared. And then the year after that, there was, like, a wife who was beaten to death, and I can't remember who disappeared that year. And then there's this time where Tomotake died, and then creepy blonde-haired girl, can't quite remember her name, uh, she disappeared. So, Keiichi seems to be suspecting his friends, and the, I know for a fact that all of our friends are innocent, because at the end of the festival, when Tomotake left, and he died very shortly afterwards, like, we were all together. So, it couldn't have been any of them, if my memory serves. However, having said that, our friends are keeping secrets from us, but also Keiichi's keeping secrets from them. So, I'm trying to figure out who's kind of behind all of the murders, and what's going on with our friends. Because I'm pretty sure our friends, like, are trying to keep stuff a secret from us, because we've only been here a month, and we, they don't want to freak out the new guy. Rena's probably having a rough time of things because she's afraid she's going to disappear. And I think that might be contributing to why she's acting so weird. I don't really know if Ren is going crazy or if Keiichi's going crazy or both. Because I definitely think Keiichi seems to be losing somewhat of a grip on reality here. Like, he's getting ridiculously paranoid being like, my friends are keeping stuff from me. I can't trust them. It's like, okay, they definitely didn't kill anybody. And you're also keeping secrets from them. So... I don't know. Maybe maybe Rena is just really freaking out, and that's why she kind of freaked out on us earlier. And as for her eavesdropping on us, she came. It could have been just she came to visit. Our dad was like, "Oh yeah, Rena, come on, go on in." Keiichi's upstairs, and then like when she reached our room, she heard that we were talking on the phone about her, and she didn't want to bother us, and then just kind of stood there, and then just kind of was listening in. Didn't really mean to do it happen that way, but then once it, the phone call finished, she's like, oh man, I can't be here, and then just booked it. I don't know. These are just some weird theories that I've had. I don't really know. <laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking about it, trying to figure out where things are going to go. But we're loading, and I have a feeling things are going to get creepier and crazier. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> hey, Galadivore, welcome. Happy Halloween. You think they're all crazy, crazy, even the teacher? No, no, it can't be the teacher. It can't be the teacher. Did we already look at all the ti- oh. Should have just said the, uh... The new tips. I think we covered all the new tips last time, right? Notice from the police chief, I think we covered this? <laughs> Not the hot teacher! Hi, Hog Squeezer, welcome. Did we do this to the departments? <laughs> Director General, to the Chief Constable, all facility managers. Regarding the cases, they've been reported by... Yeah, yeah, okay, we did this. It's become a very serious situation. Okay, just wanted to make sure. I couldn't remember. Alright, here we go. We continuing. What is gonna happen next? It's a new day! The birds are chirping, and everything's okay. Weariness and a headache. Not a very nice way to start the day. We're not feeling well. I'm not feeling well because my best friend is crazy. It seemed that my mom had noticed my sullen state. 
Oh yeah. YouTube VODs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you changed your font and color to white and now I can't see it. <laughs> Cause yes, I'm using mix it up light mode. Hawk Squeezer, thank you so much for the subscription. Enjoy your gold banana and the amazing new emotes that you have. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. <laughs> Yesterday, I kept on waking up in the middle of the night. Without a doubt, I felt a presence. I felt the presence of someone standing in front of my door. I told myself repeatedly that it was my imagination and forced myself to try and sleep. Except, not being able to stand it, I gathered up my courage and opened the door. Of course, there wasn't anyone there. See what I'm saying? Like, he's becoming super paranoid right now. That can't be good for his health. <laughs> I did... I think I did this three times throughout the night. Or maybe I just didn't remember doing it any more than that. Even though I was able to get to the breakfast table without incident, I still didn't feel at ease. Mainly just Keiichi's internal monologue is kind of leading me to believe that he's losing a bit of a sense of reality on it. That's eh. what I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm sure it's just that. That's how you know when Artie's sick. When I'm sick, I know what, like for sure I'm really sick when I'm just like, I only want to eat toast for dinner. <laughs> Welcome to Japan. It's like, you've got a bit of a fever. You can still go to school, though, right? Technically, I did go to a school, but it was mostly self-study. It wouldn't matter if much if I missed a day, would it? It could have been that I hadn't been feeling well for the last few days because I really did have a cold. If I took some medicine and got a good day of rest, I might be able to greet everyone with a smile tomorrow. Uh-oh. Startled, I looked back and forth between the entrance and the clock. It was ten minutes later than when I usually met up with Rena. It was Rena. <gasps> Tell her I'm not home, Mom! <laughs> Rena gives me the creeps these days. <laughs> Rena was a good girl. She might be somewhat quirky, but she was certainly cute. There's no denying that, but cute and crazy can go together. And I don't care how attractive you are. If your personality be stank, I ain't interested. Although, again, I, th I think Rena's probably just maybe in a similar situation that Keiichi is. If Keiichi's kind of losing a grip on reality, I bet Rena possibly is too. So, maybe that's, maybe that's what's going on. Why would I be so scared of something like that? It wasn't Rena's fault. It was probably mine. I had to, it had to have been my cold. It, it just had to be. <laughs> Mom headed off to the door. I would have to pass by the entrance to get back to my room. Uh-oh. I didn't have the nerve to meet with Rena, so I wrapped myself in a blanket on the sofa and closed my eyes. I was so sleep-deprived that I quickly fell into a deep slumber. Gentle piano music, I love it. I had only intended to lie down for a bit, but it was almost noon when I woke up. I called out to my parents, but they didn't seem to be around. On the table, I found lunch prepared and a note. Mom and Dad had apparently driven off to somewhere far away. What? <laughs> this, this, um, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> it likely had to do with Dad's work. This happened every so often, so it wasn't that unusual. They would be back for dinner. But might be a bit late. Okay, it's not just like, so on, we're taking a surprise trip to Disneyland. On the note, it said, The insurance card is in the cabinet. Take it and go to the hospital. There was also a well-drawn map to the hospital. It's going to be hard. If you got a fever, it's going to be hard walking to the hospital, especially when you're in the boondocks. That's right. I hadn't been there before, so I didn't know exactly where it was. I had a light lunch, although it really was just leftovers from the morning and just in case it went to the hospital. That probably is the responsible thing to do, as long as we don't get accosted along the way, which I'm sure we will. Normally, I would never be here, in the middle of a weekday. Just walking around like this had me feeling guilty. It was an odd feeling. Following my mom's map, I took a road that, I'd really un that I usually never used. After walking for a bit, the hospital sign came into view. Oh, here we are. It's actually in town, is it? Eerie Clinic was written rather stylishly on the sign. You're styling! The clinic wasn't very big, but based on the scale of the rest of Hinamizawa, it was far too grand. There was a parking lot and even a reserved spot for buses. They must be making a mint. 
Oh my gosh, I love the alligator welcoming us. Like, hello, this is the hospital. <laughs> I spaced out in the air-conditioned waiting room until it was my turn to be seen. Yes, ma'am. After half-heartedly answering all of the chatty doctor's questions, he responded with the old, It's probably a cold. They gave me a shot and three days' worth of medicine. A shot for a cold? What the heck? Uh-uh. I thought it was a little overboard, but if it would clear away the gloomy feeling I'd been having lately, then it was worth it. Who gives someone a shot if they just have a cold? Way overkill. I don't... Zero out of ten. Worst doctor. I settled the bill and took a quick trip to the washroom. As I was leaving, I overheard a conversation between some elderly people who seemed to be regulars at the clinic. Of course, I had no intention of eavesdropping. If it just wasn't for that word. Uh-oh. Okay, they're talking about Tomotake and a uh, blonde-haired girl. I thought they were a couple, but maybe not. Were they talking about Tomotake-san? No, they were talking about a different super buff guy with a camera. I could feel my ears perking up. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you just go sign the dotted line and bada beam bada boom. <laughs> villager is based. I'll, I'll let you decide which villager. Was that her name? Her name was mentioned, like, once. So her name was Takano-san? That woman with Tomotake-san. Okay, that is the blonde-haired girl. And she worked at this clinic? Oyashiro-sama's shadow was following me everywhere I went. It's a small town. I started listening more closely, but they began talking about fishing, and it didn't seem like they were going to revisit the topic. I gave up and left. Thus, even though I was separated from the daily monotony of school, I wasn't able to escape from Oyashiro-sama's shadow. But of course, Oyashiro-sama was the guardian deity of this place, of Hinamizawa. As long as I was in Hinamizawa, I wouldn't be able to escape. There also might be some demon possession uh, stuff going on. Maybe it was because I was walking outside, but my appetite had suddenly returned. I might as well buy a snack with the change from the examination fee on the way home. Contemplating that, I turned onto a familiar street. At that moment, I heard a car horn abruptly honk behind me. Was I really walking so far into the middle of the road that where I'd be in a car's way? I moved farther off to the side, but the horn was still honking at me. I turned around, peeved. Oh no, it's Uisi. <laughs> He's gonna make me go into his car again. It was Uisi-san. He stepped out of his car, AC on full blast, and waved at me. This guy is definitely paying a lot for that AC bill. Head dirt. Oh, uh, Oh, hello. Wait, Oh, sorry, we see just sneezed in your face. Oh, you know, cut the kite out of the tattoo. Sorry, I look at the. He is not in the slightest bit worried about catching whatever we have. I was just going to lie down after going home anyway. And I didn't really have a cold. Uh, I don't really trust this guy. <laughs> He's always very eager to make us go into his car with him, which uh, uh, <clears throat> is not something you should be doing. I know he's a police officer, but sometimes that doesn't mean anything. Bruh, this better be, like, a really good restaurant. I'd finally begun to understand Uisi-san's roundabout way of saying things. He probably wanted to talk to me about stuff that would be difficult to discuss while in Hinamizawa. 
Oh, are we actually going with him? We uh, freaking are. I went with Luisi-san riding in his frigid car. Great. It was almost as if the bright sunlight outside was a lie. No, I just made up some lie about getting the uh, Garfield treasuries. Yeah. I recalled Rena, who had been listening to the phone conversation all that time, separated from me by just the door. Even now, in the brightness of the sunlight, the thought still creeped me out. With a big bump that jolted the car, the road connecting to the city changed from dirt to pavement. My head swiveled back with a sudden realization. That's right. This was where Tomotake-san died. Tomitake-san no sousa wa anshou ni noriyagete imasu. Uh-huh. Luisi-san spoke while peering at me from the corner of his eye. Jibun no tsume de nodo wo kaki aburu to yu ijou sa kara I thought they said that he didn't have any drugs in his system, though. Otherwise, that is the obvious explanation. Yeah, I agree. Drugs like that exist? Uh-huh. It's a sink to hall. That's what I'm calling it. Demo Yeah. I haven't heard of any hallucinogens that do that. I couldn't help but feel that the police were worthless. <laughs> I can't help but feel like this is a like social commentary now. I just wanted the idea of a curse to be dissociated with Tomotake san's mysterious death. And that's the other reason. Be yeah, because all of Keiichi's friends worked together at the festival when he was dying, so it couldn't have been any of us. That made me a bit relieved. We passed in front of the rather desolate, but still busier than Hinamizawa train station. The car pulled into a restaurant parking lot, and I followed Uisi-san into the shop. It was pretty crowded, but there were only adults at this hour. Of course there wouldn't be children in here in the middle of a weekday. Is this the restaurant where Nagisa worked? I hope so. <laughs> I guess we'll do non-smoking, because I got the kid with me. We were led by a peculiar, peculiarly dressed waitress to our table. I sat with Uisi-san in the booth. Uh, unless I see Nagisa, I don't think much of it. Oh no, is it one of those places? I hope not. Oh, no. You took me to a Hooters. Great. I don't want to be at Hooters. Can we go to, like... I don't know. I'm a simple man. Can we go to, like, a Culver's or even a Wendy's? I would definitely go for that over Hooters. Oh, great. This guy's a pervert. Lovely. Well, I don't want to be here with him. So this guy... <laughs> okay, that that's wrong, bro. That's not okay. He's not even like, I come here for the food, I swear. Regardless of how the waitresses looked, the food was decent enough. Finishing our meals while talking about some inane topic, Uisi-san's after-meal cup of coffee arrived at the table. You know, Yeah, fun place to be. 
うちのおばあさまに今朝ちょっと聞いてみたんです。ウィシさん、took out the notepad that was stuffed into his breast pocket。何でもですね。大昔は、ひなみざは、鬼が淵って呼ばれてたんだそうです。<笑> Q Space Junk Galaxy Music apparently。The Demon's Abyss is quite a name。鬼が淵。すごい名前ですね。今でもその名前、残ってるんですよ。神主の妻が受水自殺した沼の名前は、今でもと言うんです。レナズマ、エリカズマ、ナレナズマ。ヌマノソコノソコア、ウニタチノスムクリトツナガテルト、イワレトタンダソウ。エカズマムズアクシュリアディマン。オフコース、ノバディアトミアニフィンバッサチアミナスワープ。デデスネ。ウニナフチワ、オソレガレテイタドドジニ、アガメラレテムイタンダソウ。This is really reminding me of the Space Junk Galaxy music. A respect born of fear. I guess you could say it was a kind of de deification. A village of inhuman creatures. Okay, well, I, th I don't believe in this hogwash, so what's the actual explanation? Mm -hmm. Even if we are calling them demons. Tengu, long nosed goblins, or Senin would be a more apt description. Onitteitemo,そんなに悪い人たちじゃないみたいですね。でもそこはやっぱり人食いようにらしいんです。ばあさまに聞いた昔話ではですね、息子を治療してもらった大将として連れてきた母親を食わせろ。こうなるらしい
Parts of the story he told me overlapped with his theory that the entire village was in on the crime. Even if it wasn't the whole village, it was conceivable that the villagers were hiding under the covers and leaving them to die when there's a group that was on their hunt, was it? I didn't dare speak it. Kichi's gonna be like, everyone in the village is guilty, can't trust anybody! <laughs> Which I guess is kinda true, but... That's what I wanted to know. It seemed that we were both waiting for the other to say the last part. He waited for the waitress to finish pouring the coffee before speaking. Satoshi-san no. muttered as he watched the milk swirl around in his coffee. I don't think we should be hearing this. If Uisi san had said this to me before, I would have gotten angry at him for calling my friends into question. But as I was now, I couldn't. All our friends are innocent. They did not kill Tomotake. とてもつまらない話になります。前原さんがつまらないと感じたらいつでもおっしゃってください。オッケー、イッツスティープ。終わりにしますので。Okay, was wearing the most serious expression that I'd ever seen from him. It was as if he was telling me to prepare myself and listen. I again, I don't think Keiji should hear this. Cuz this is literally just going to make him trust his friends even less, and I don't think that's going to be good. There were quite a few things I regretted hearing from Uisi san. But none of them were as threatening as this. A little voice inside me was screaming like an alarm. That's me! <laughs> That's me! I'm the one saying that! Stop, Keiichi. This was probably the last one. I took a deep breath and silenced that voice. I would not run from the truth. That was all I could utter. Uisi-san stared into my eyes silently for a few moments. After he was certain I was ready, he began. Could have just been a coincidence. Uisi-san had said before that Mion had defied the dam project vehemently. Well, it wasn't hard to imagine how she'd be if she got worked up. Yeah. Ooh. So the married couple who died was Satoko's parents. Oh, now things are getting... Wait, so Satoko's parents and Rika's parents both died as a result of the quote-unquote curse? Really? Satoko? And Satoko's... Well... I'm assuming Satoshi is her brother? I guess I don't know for sure. Could have been like her cousin or something. Disappeared last year. Man. Satoko got... Satoko's got a rough lot in life. She's still a brat, though. Uisi-san's look told me that my voice was too loud. I realized it as well and quickly quieted down. Yes. Yeah, so we knew that. What the heck? Why are all of Satoko's family members dying? This is very suspicious. <laughs> to quote that Asian guy on YouTube, Oh, what the hell? <laughs> I could tell my lips were getting dry. I didn't even have the wits to keep my mouth from hanging agape. I had thought it was nothing but a bizarre incident, one that I could easily distance myself from. But clicking and clacking, it had snuck all the way to my feet. Yeah, okay, so Satoshi was her brother. What the heck? Okay, so somebody's just targeting Satoko's friends and relations, basically. 
そのなちょっと What? You can't just spring all this on me. It took everything I had to finally say that. I gulped down a glass of water and once again wiped my face with a napkin. Her n okay, but here's the thing. Yes, Satoko has had a rough lot in life. Yes, I sympathize with her. No, what she's doing is not okay, though. And she's still got to knock it out. Knock it off. Calm down, Keiji Mayabara. But Uisi-san was relentless. Instead of waiting for me to finish sorting out my feelings, he started speaking again. The last of things I shouldn't have heard. Also, I want to point out that Hinamizawa is a very, very small town, so it's going to be hard to not have the people at our school and our friend group involved in at least some way. Just saying. <laughs> Duh, I don't like this. <laughs> oh, he looks... Oh, wait, no, no, he doesn't. I was going to say he looks sadder there. No, he doesn't. Yeah, I agree. I think it's just because the town is small. Except for the Satoko. They might be targeting Satoko. Mion? Satoko? Rika-chan? <laughs> he only ever puts the chan at the end of Rika. So what if they're connected? You're telling me all of my friends? It couldn't be. It just couldn't be. They're not the perpetrators. They're the victims. <laughs> Oh, Rena is different, isn't she? Rena isn't connected with the victims at all. Yeah, she's a new, she's a new kid as well. He said it in a roundabout way. Is he saying she's also connected? Really? Probably because she kidnapped someone cute and took them home. What the heck, Rena? What are you doing? <laughs> she was asked to wipe all of the windows, and then she just was. She did it a little too forcefully. That same spacey Rena had. I couldn't even imagine it. I could? <laughs> well, yeah, the school was so... It was hot out and there was no air conditioning. <laughs> and they couldn't close the windows because they were broken. <laughs> I don't know what dysautomatia is, or autonomia, but whatever. I wonder if it was something like a nervous breakdown. I'd heard it that it happens to people who are really methodical or overly sensitive. Neither of those matched Rena's easygoing personality. So when you said that you did a little background research, you mean you just dug up their whole past? It? It? I pressed forward carelessly. There couldn't be anything more for me to regret. She didn't eat. She doesn't even live in town. How would she have even known? <laughs> hey, have a good night, Galadivore. This is a scary game. Yeah, I mean, we haven't really gotten to the, a lot of the scary parts in this stream yet, but yeah, I f it felt like someone's stone cold hand was caressing my back. Why? Why had Rena spoken of Oyashiro-sama before she even came to Hinamizawa? That's what I'm saying! <laughs> Unless there's some kind of demon possession going on. Oh, this is definitely some demon possession stuff going on. No question. Yep, that checks out. My mind froze. I couldn't process what I was being told. This guy's just like, don't trust your friends. Okay, see ya, thanks for coming to Hooters with me. その後しばらくして日南沢に引っ越されたんですよ。なあ、そうそう。レナさんは、よそ者なんかじゃないですよ。え住民票で分かったんですが、リュウグ一家は元は… 
I guess that makes more sense why they would move back. I don't. I can't imagine a whole lot of people would just be like, random small town that's kind of a cult with like 50 people. Let's move there. My mind went completely blank. It was similar to the static you'd see on a blank TV channel. My ears began ringing as I lost all sense of comprehension. No, I'm not, because somebody just told me that my friends are terrible people. No, tell me more about my friends' dirty secrets. Those words brought me back. I couldn't let it end here. Irritated, I let out one final reprisal. Yeah, we, he became friends of all of us. I, I don't know what your point is. If I mean, I guess Uisi could suspect our friends because he just doesn't know that they have an alibi. Why doesn't Keiichi just say we were all together after he left? None of us could be the culprit. This would solve it in two seconds. <laughs> I know! Like, what the heck is going on? This this random police officer is just like, Hey, let's kidnap this kid, take him to Hooters, and, and tell him all of the dirty secrets about his mentally ill friends. <laughs> and then, wink, wink, bring him back, and nothing bad was going to happen as a result of this. Now there was nothing I could respond with. I know! I fell silent as my brain turned to mush. My brain turns to mush often when I play visual novels on stream. I had completely forgotten about the medicine I had gotten today until uisi san had said that. I got another glass of water and we left the shop after I chugged it down. Oh, and speaking of chugging water... <clears throat> we got into the car and returned to Hinamizawa via the rough road. I never really paid attention while I was on my bike, but did cars normally shake this much? It was almost as if the road was desperately trying to tell me something. Oh, don't go back, Keiichi! No! You're going to die! Badump! That big jolt was from the difference in elevation of the road when it changed from cement to dirt. I know that all too well. My family, or my parents live on a dirt road, so... I was certain that I heard tonotake san scream. I sat in silence, just letting myself be shaken by the car. I think you're hallucinating here, Keiichi. Nobody screamed. Yes? Is this going to be a regular thing where you kidnap me in your Max AC car and we go on like a fr a, like a buddy buddy friend date <laughs> while you tell me dark secrets about the town? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Good question. I blurted out the question. Really just blurted it out. I didn't expect an answer. Good question! Why is he taking such a shine to us? I understand stood quite well that Uisi san was investigating this stream of suspicious incidents. But why was he telling me all of this? I knew nothing, and I couldn't help. Everything Uisi-san spoke of was news to me. First of all, what could I, having just moved here, possibly know? By chance, if there was a reason for Uisi-san to reach out to me, then it would have to be... that I was part of my own circle of friends who looked suspicious to Uisi-san. Alright, congrats. だからこそ在職中にこの事件だけははっきりさせておきたかったんです。で、大石さんは疑ってるんですよね。Chichi, just say it. Just say you were all together playing games after Tomotake-san left because you were. Then he would just be like, "Hey, we can all collaborate with each other and or corroborate that we had nothing to do with it." And there were people around who witnessed us together. It couldn't have been us. Me no. <laughs> Uisi-san didn't really give a response. It felt a little late, but I thought it was his way of showing a bit of consideration to my feelings.
Oh yeah, that's gonna do wonders for Keiichi's mental health. I wanted to reply with, That's absurd! But in my downtrodden state, I couldn't bring myself to say it. In other words, he was insinuating that on the next Watanagashi, I might be the victim. How about you drop me at my house, not at Mion's house? After some time, the car finally reached the path to my house. The clock read 2 p.m. I was surprised so little time had passed since we ate. It was hot outside the car. Is there going to be Higurashi Chapter 2 in the future? I mean, depends on how much I like this one and how much of a cliffhanger it ends on, because I'm pretty sure we're not solving everything in Chapter 1. Also, chap Chapter 1 is free, Chapter 2 costs money. So, at the very least, we are not playing Chapter 2 this year. Maybe next year. Oh, we'll have to see. The chirping of the Higurashi hurt my ears. Here's the thing. It doesn't just work like that. <laughs> you just told me that my friends are probably murderers and that they're mentally ill and probably are killing people. And you're just like, yeah, but you can just forget I said anything. <laughs> hey, Marty. Happy Halloween. I, yes, I, I could afford Chapter 2. But the question is, should I buy it? And that will depend on how Chapter 1 ends. It's like, I figured it out. The culprit is... To be continued. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to end. <laughs> if, I, if I have problems with pre-calculus, can I contact you? I, uh, I don't really know. You just kidnapped me in your car and drove me to Hooters. All right, fine. <laughs> I wasn't collected enough to understand uisi sans roundabout way of saying it. That is definitely the scariest Halloween, without question. That's true. He, he not only, like, took us to Hooters, he took us to Hooters while we were sick. <laughs> That's just not okay. I didn't really give any sort of response. Why? I don't understand you, bro. <laughs> I don't think uh, Keiichi's in any position to believe anybody. <laughs> we'll always remember this time together, Keiichi. <laughs> the tires crunched over the dirt road as the car made a U-turn and disappeared into a cloud of kicked-up dust. It felt like I was watching a boat only throw me a lifesaver in a shark-infested waters before disappearing into the distance. That was the first time I thought Oisi-san was being unfair. Telling me I was going to be the next victim and then just saying to contact him if something happened. This wasn't a criminal investigation. He was fishing. And I was just the bait dangling off of the line. Would the fish be the perpetrator? Or was it really just Oyashiro-sama's curse? Either way, the bait would be swallowed whole. <laughs> For some reason, I could do nothing but stare at the puddle of water left behind by the AC from the car. Yeah, I don't think we should be hanging out with Huisi-san anymore. I don't trust him. But I also don't really trust anyone. 